Phil, I have to ask you, and everybody wants to know, what is it like managing Otani? I never get that question. That's mm-hmm. weird. <laughs> I, like to, I like to be the only one to ask questions like that. I know you've never heard it yeah. before. There's a lot to it. I mean, the, well, first off, it's, it's certainly a pleasure to have him on your team. Um, the talent, as you guys all see, uh, the things that nobody else gets to see, though, are the personality, the type of person he is, the work ethic. Um, he, and I've said this many times, uh, he has an agenda from the time he wakes up to the time he goes to bed and actually everything in between that because with his sleep schedule is part of it too. But his agenda is being the best player in the world. Obviously it's working. Um, but he does not do anything or put anything in his body and everything he does throughout the day is calculated for him to be the best. And it's not money driven. It's driven because he wants to win. And that is the best quality. I think you can be in a teammate. Um, I happen to have two, uh, great players like that. And he and Mike Trout, and we'll get Mike back here pretty soon. But when your two best players are two of the best people in the room, uh, they just they live and die just to win baseball games and, and want to be on that stage at the end of it. Makes my job a heck of a lot easier. Guys just kind of fall in line. Um, they're leaders by example. Um, if you notice, they, they always lead the league. They're, they're both in the top five. This is nothing that anybody talks about, but in times the first base, which tells you they hit a comeback or to the mound or they hit a ground ball to second base. They're, they're busting it down the line, um, except when days when Shohei pitches. But just examples that set that they're leaders, they want to win, uh, guys follow them. It's, it's pretty awesome to be around. Well, you mentioned Trout, so I might as well get this out of the way. When are we going to see him back? Well, he started swinging a bat a couple of days ago. Uh, yesterday, actually, um, you know, the, the progression with this is dry swings without hitting the ball. Because when you start hitting the ball and that, uh, the vibration through the bat, that's what kind of affects the hand. It's more of a pain tolerance thing with, with this surgery, but – He's right on schedule to be at the front end of what they all talk about the rehab is for this. And uh, I know he's been working hard on his body Uh, to give it a timetable. You know, I I think once it starts feeling good and he can let it go, it would not be long within a week or so after uh, when he actually starts taking batting practice, which I think will happen in a couple of days. Make sure you give me a heads up so I can be the one to break the news. Okay. Old habits die hard, you know? Yeah. You got it. Um, Buster only was on with Rich, and he told a story about you talking to Shohei at Yankee Stadium and referring back to your days as the third base coach, asking where Stan and Judge put the ball. Can you tell us that story, please? Yeah, he doesn't take batting practice on the field too often. And uh, this particular day, he walks out, and I, I looked at him at the cage. I said, what are you doing out here? And he goes, I need to remember what it's like to hit a home run. And looking back, he gone probably four or five days without a home run he took his first round in the cage and he walked out and he said where did he asked me where Stan and judge would hit home runs during batting practice and i told him you know right above that little restaurant was some of the farthest ones i've seen where the cameras are and this second round he proceeded to hit them i mean well over where the cameras were well over the restaurant and this is to the opposite field a little bit um just that's just him being being him. I mean, he can put on a display during batting practice like nobody I've ever ever seen. I obviously watched Judge and Stanton hit him for four years, and, and boy, they can hit him a long way for sure. This is just a different sound. It's a different look, uh, which we've said about those other two guys for a long time. I mean, they still hit him. You're in awe when you watch him hit Judge and, and Stanton hit home runs in batting practice, but. We used to go out and watch like McGuire take BP and, and uh, Sammy Sosa, but this, what you're watching here, if you ever get a chance to do that, it's it's like nothing you've ever seen. Are you inviting me down to watch a game? Is that what you just did here? Come on out. Bring there. Rich, bring the kids, bring them all. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a great time. By the way, I'll be there next week. Who are you kidding? Um, I actually haven't been to Anaheim since, since the uh, World Series, so I feel like I have to get back down there. When you watch a guy like Otani, though, go out and then you're concerned because he says his finger hurts and he's he's going to come out, he's not going to pitch, you got to call a guy in a couple innings early, then he goes out and hits a home run. I mean, when does that – this doesn't happen. It's just magic down there with him. Yeah, I mean, he's – last week, you know, he had the, the long day. He threw the complete game against – he threw a shout-out against Detroit in game one of a doubleheader. And everybody's heard about this. Game two, he hit the two home runs. Um, he kind of cramped up the next day. This was more as like lower legs and stuff in, in Toronto. 
Um, we talked about getting a day off. He refused. He he just he knew he, was, he knew his body was fine and ready to go. And then last night, nothing in the arm, nothing in the elbow or shoulder. This was just his hand, and it kept the middle finger just kept like kind of curling down to his palm, and he couldn't get it to straighten out. It was a cramp situation, and and actually he pitched with it the inning before. And I was looking up at the board. You know, he saw a fastball at 90, and you see really slow breaking balls. I think it was a five-pitch inning. He got through it and just came in and said, if this doesn't you know, get better, I'm, I'm not going to be able to pitch anymore. And, and sure enough, it, it did not. He actually hit that inning, was able to wrap the finger around the bat, um, but just wasn't able to get a grip on the ball. So I had to take him out of the game, which um, through four good innings. And our bullpen did a great job. It's just, you know, missing Shohei out there and that, that you know, the length that he can give you sometimes. Uh, certainly, you know, it wasn't the reason we lost the game by any means, but uh, he certainly contributed to his side on the offensive side to help us win it. Uh, we just didn't get it done at the end. How do you get him to stay, Phil? <clears throat> you know, I don't – honestly, I don't really think about that right now. I mean, I know it sounds cliche, but we're worried about today. Um, when the winter comes, uh, you know, I think we have a great relationship and – um, if he asks me for advice, I'll give it to him on certain places or anything like that. I mean, I'd love to have him back, obviously. Um, I think anybody would. There's going to be a lot of teams in the running for this deal. But, you know, we really don't think about it now. And, and, and it doesn't invade our clubhouse. Uh, that's something that's a strength of ours. Uh, it's certainly talked about a lot with the, through the media and everything and through me. Um, he fields his questions every now and again, but he gives the same answer. And it's true. I know it, like I said, it sounds cliche, but uh, he's focused on today and winning today, uh, wants to win here. Certainly think if we do win here and, and get to, you know, and show that we can win, I mean, that might make a difference at the end of the day. But, you know, right now, like I said, we're, we're worried about this season. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku Channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.